there's an enemy of our souls and fear is one of his favorite tactics against us. Our next guest knows very well the strategies of the enemy because he was once a high ranking satanic priest. In his new book, Destroying wow. Fear, John Ramirez brings us strategies to overthrow the enemy so we can walk in total freedom. John, welcome to Real Life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. So you know, I love coming here. I love Pittsburgh. I'm still a fan. <laughs> Yay. And Yay. being here is it's a miracle. So thank you so just much. Just saying for that me. alone that I'm a Steeler fan <laughs> just gave you so much credibility Big here. You have Steeler no fan. idea. All the way from the 70s, you know, <laughs> all the way the black and gold. But yeah. I'm here and, and I, I'm praising God for this opportunity to really be a blessing, not only to the body of Christ, but be to a blessing to people that are out there, unbelievers that are struggling with so much, yeah. especially fear. Fear is like a spiritual cancer. So we're so happy to have you here because in one point, you know, you were on the kingdom of darkness as a satanic priest and now mm -hmm. you're on the good side, you're on the winning yeah. side in the kingdom of God. Tell us about that. You know, it, it, it's, it's amazing because I, I you know, we, we, we start somewhere and when we open the eyes, 25 years went by. I was 25 years engrossed in darkness and spiritual demonic warfare of putting witchcraft on people, putting tormenting uh, spirits on people. And one of the tools that I will use is a spirit of fear release it on people to torment them and try to control them and manipulate them because fear opens the door that paralyzes people's lives. And, and one thing is in life that we can't lose time and opportunities that God has given us. And to fear, there been many great people out there today, they can do so much, but they're stuck and they're closed down and they're shut down and they can't move forward. Mm. Tell me what, what fear is. How would you describe fear? What does it look like and taste like and feel like? And how does it paralyze people in their life? I, to, to me, it's like, it's like uh, fear is like a spiritual pharaoh. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the Old Testament, how pharaoh was, mm -hmm. were plagued, the people from Israel were plagued. Fear is, is a plague, it's, it's a tormenting thing, it's a, it's a disaster thing that when it comes upon you, it just, it grips you. It's like a straitjacket, you know, it just comes up on you that, you, you know, you, the days seem like weeks, the weeks seem like months. You can't see beyond yourself. You can't, you're stuck in a place. It's like putting putting a person in, in a box, you know, uh, and tormenting the mind. And the person as talented, as gifted, as beautiful, as, as, as things this person could do in so many ways, they don't see themselves out of that situation because it's like a spiritual cancer. It eats away your wow. life. Mm -hmm. You're talking about that spiritual cancer. How did that spiritual cancer come face to face in your life? How did you see fear just manifest in your well, life? Well, you know, and one of my things when I left the occult, 25 years after the occult, I left the devil. To, uh, I used to sit with the devil face to face and get orders from the devil to play wow. uh, neighborhoods, astral project, curse neighborhood, wow. put spirit, spirit of fear poverty, sickness in neighborhoods, mm -hmm. release these demons upon neighborhoods. And, and when I left, because uh, I went to hell, came back, that's how I got saved. So when I left the kingdom of darkness, now I was plagued with this demonic fear that came over me because the demons would come at night to try to torment me. And uh, I, I went to follow Jesus, a person that I couldn't see when I used to see the devil. And this tormenting fear that I have, the nighttime is coming, I have to go to sleep. These demons are coming for me. Should I sleep during the day, step by night? And there was 30 days of just torment. I mean, I thought I was gonna lose my mind. Mm -hmm. And then God completely set me free. Mm -hmm. You talk about fear being mm -hmm. like a bully. How is that? You know, I fear it's a bully because it's always trying to push you around, mm -hmm. manipulate you, control you, uh, come at you, you know, when you least suspect it. You know, the bully in the schoolyard is the person that thinks that he can pick on you, pick on you every day mm -hmm. because he thinks he has the upper hand. He wants to he wants to prove a point. He wants to make himself look good until you say enough is enough, bully. No more. Mm -hmm. You fear I'm giving you an eviction notice. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to leave. And you have that choice. Enough is enough. Enough well, and, is enough. And you, this book to me is like that. Enough mm -hmm. is it's enough. enough yes. It's like, it's serious business. Like we can't play around with fear. You're, when you're playing around with fear, you're really playing around with a tool of the enemy. You can't entertain fear. You can't, you can't sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you can't even medicate <clears throat> fear. Mm -hmm. Fear has to be cast out. You know, and, and the reason I wrote the book because of the fact, because I came from the devil's camp. I'm writing something from where it really all started, where it starts, where it originated, right? Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. Right. You know, so it originated from the devil's camp, how he can use it and plague you, play your family, play your, your marriage, play your children. Mm -hmm. 
I sometimes the devil try to plague me with fear. Oh, you are ministering in London. Your daughter lives here by herself. Your daughter lives by herself. Something's going to happen to her. Your daughter take the subways in New York City. Someone's going to push on the train. You know, the devil try to torment me with these things. Stop preaching the gospel. Stop telling people about, about the enemy's camp, exposing the enemy's camp. But we're going we're gonna to come upon your daughter. And I don't have a spirit of fear. God has not given me that. I have right. overcome fear Amen. through the word of God. Right. That is Amen. So good. And, and even just hearing you talk about mm -hmm. how the enemy was just like coming at your mind, like those thoughts. It's like, because yeah. it's all about territory, territory. when it comes to play, because yeah. Satan is legal all about rights. gaining territory. Legal, legal rights. The devil wants legal rights over your life, over fear, destroy, try to destroy you, try to manipulate you, try to control you, try to steal God's best out of your life, just tormenting fear, whether you're a believer or not. Fear comes in every way. Fear, I always say, it reigns in the just and the unjust. Fear reigns on the, on, on the people that are saved. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you know, it's amazing because I wrote this book all because I, I even, I, I've been preaching in London and people in London saying they come to eight out of 10, eight out of 10 people come to the altar. John, I don't know how to say this, but I, I, I can't move forward. I have lost five years of my life because yeah. of fear. I have, I, 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 I can't even handle my marriage. I can't handle my children because of fear. And this is across the pond. People are yeah. struggling. Here in the States, in New York, people are struggling with fear. So it's everywhere. So how do you do it? How do you give an eviction order? How do you become free? How do you live free? Mm -hmm. So when fear comes knocking on your door one more time, you're like, I'm not opening the door. You're not going to move me anymore because I have, I have conquered fear. And the book teaches the prayers. The book teaches mm -hmm. the insight, how to dismantle, uproot, and let that, let, let that fear devil mm -hmm. show up and die in your life and be free. Well, in every single chapter at the end, you have the prayer points, and yes. then you have like declarations of this is what you say to renounce, to yes. speak over. Amen. How important is what we say, what comes out of our mouth in dealing with fear? You know, I mean, the Bible speaks about it, right? We got to go back to the book that knows it all, right? I mean, Bible is an amazing book because the author's still alive, right? <laughs> the author's right. still alive from that book, right? So 18, Proverbs 18, 21 say, life and death lays in your tongue. And we have declarations, we have the spiritual warfare press, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, they, you, you, to, in order to defeat fear, you need spiritual warfare press. Yes. I mean, there's some prayers that work. Yes. If I have a toothache, I'm not gonna go to this. I'm not gonna go to the foot doctor. Right. You know, I'm gonna go to this. I'm gonna go to the dentist to take care of my toothache. So the spiritual warfare prayers are powerful with the with with with, with the power of the Holy Spirit behind it, and yes. you can destroy this man to yes. uproot and cancel fear mm -hmm. to dec dec declaring, mm -hmm. declaring victory. Over Declaim purpose, declaim your destiny, declaim that, you know, this situation should pass. This is temporary. That God has so much for me ahead of me than when I'm dealing with the situation. And once you declare and you put those prayers together, you mix your faith, you beat the devil like a piñata. Right. And I think when you talk about, like, with the, because spiritual warfare, I think sometimes we're kind of like, oh, just praying. But it's really like you have to sometimes get ruthless and get in your spirit with the Holy Spirit and really just go to bat because yeah. those, the spirit of fear and different things that come against us doesn't it necessarily always want to jump off and leave. We have some work we have to we, do. We, 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 got, we got to be bold. We got to be bold against the enemy. We have to be bold against the enemy of our soul. We have to be courageous against, I mean, imagine David came to deliver lunch at, 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 a, at a camp. Mm -hmm. And Goliath was right across, and Goliath mm -hmm. was saying some nasty things. He's the bully in the schoolyard. He's the fear factor. Mm -hmm. He had Israel paralyzed with fear. No one wanted to step into the battleground and face this, this giant, mm -hmm. right? David heard from the say, who, who, who is this guy talking? Is, is this guy crazy? I got mm -hmm. Jesus with me. I fear not. And he stepped into the battlefield, and you know the story. Goliath was, you know, a few seconds later, there was no more Goliath. Mm. There was no more fear because David knew how to deal with fear. He knew how to take care of fear through the Holy Spirit. And we need to step in the front of the face mm -hmm. of fear. Your Goliath, you need to step in front of your Goliath. Get your slingshot ready, right. and get those spiritual warfare prayers ready. And say, Devil, today you're not going to taunt me, me, and my family no more. I'm not going because fear leads to suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, sad to say, fear is a tormenting devil that if you don't deal with it, it will end up killing you yes. physically yes. one day. Because fear will torment you to the point that you think you'd rather be dead mm -hmm. than live on. And I think that we need to cancel that spirit of fear. Well, you're talking about David and Goliath. David had to know who he was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when he was approaching Goliath. Yep. How important is it for us as believers to know who we are, that we're not, we're not insecure, we're not too shy, we're not too wounded or how important is it to stand up know who we are as believers you know as an ex-devil worshiper right 25 years in the devil's camp god had a plan for my life as far as my father took me was the car wash 
And I came from a family of rejection. I came from a family of torment and all this fear factor in my family through my dad. My dad was a wall up. And coming today in, in Christ, who the loving father who, who have took me out of the pits of hell, yes. snatched me out of the pit and put me in a safe place, put me in a place that, you know, today he redeemed me from the pawn shop, right? Mm. He redeemed me. And now mm. today I have a life that counts and, and the life that I'm moving forward in my life that, that I, I understand that if I've been with God, who is fear? I have, I have the boldness and the courage that I've seen so much in Jesus Christ in my life for the 20 years wow. that when I look back, mm -hmm. the only footstep I see in the sand is his that carry me through. So if he's carrying you through, he brought you this far, he ain't going to leave you there. It's time to fight. It's right. time to be armed and dangerous mm -hmm. and be a spiritual sniper mm -hmm. and bring down fear out of your family, mm -hmm. your loved ones, your friends, your church, whoever it is, man, stand in the gap and be courageous. Right. Amen. And, and John, why would you say now, like this is such a now message, a now word for the body of Christ to understand, apprehend, okay, we have the spirit of fear that's like this tormenting spirit that's against us, but we have to war, be on the offense, we know we have the victory in Christ, but why would you say it's so important for us to grab this revelation so we can walk in that freedom? I, I, I think because the devil knows his time is short. The devil knows Jesus is coming back soon. Mm -hmm. The devil understands that, 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 that he needs to accomplish his mission on the believer. He needs to stop you from God's best. He needs to stop your purpose and your destiny. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have created to be unique, one of a kind, originals in Christ. And, and the devil understand that every person that rise up and defeat fear, mm -hmm. you can go on and talk to the next person that's being tormented and you can help that person be set free. Wow. And I think that the time we are in today because of the certain times around the world and around, around the times of the signs that are happening, not around the world, in your neighborhood, in your community, we've seen the news, we've seen the things that are going, that are plaguing us, either the news, things that are plaguing us on the radio. The devil is using, the devil, the Bible said that the devil is the prince of the air. The Prince yes. of the Airway. Praise God for holy ground that we are on yes, today. Amen. Right. Praise God for this holy ground for the show that we right. uh, we we sounding the trumpet. We're the watchmen of the war mm -hmm. on this on this show, mm -hmm. and we're letting people fear not. God is with you. And if He could be with you, who could be against you? Yeah. I think about the boldness that you have today and all that you've come through. You literally have marks on your body tattooed from, on you from the kingdom of darkness. Carved, carved with the razor in the flesh. When I a, sold my soul to the devil. A razor in the flesh. And here you are today facing and fighting fear right in its face. Mm -hmm. How can we pray for, for our brothers and sisters to get that same boldness that fear can't control me any longer. I'm going to get out of this. I, I, think, I think one of the things in the book is so unique that whatever you, whatever you, whatever you pronounce over your life, you have to renounce. Whatever you accept it, you have to now, you have to throw in the trash, right? I'm just giving you, so the book brings this, this depth into saying, if I accepted this, now I renounce it because that's not what God has for me. God doesn't have that plan for me. So today, whatever tormented me, whatever, whether it's sickness, there's people that, that are sick, people got cancer, and, and, you, and the yeah. devil's lying and you're putting a tormenting fear. Mm -hmm. You're gonna die. You're not gonna be here next year. And, and oh, you have diabetes and oh, your high blood pressure is high. You're never gonna get healed. You're never gonna get well. Right. And your mind is being plagued by these things mm -hmm. and going on. And you have to say, no, you have to draw the line and say, I make a choice. Yeah. I will not submit to fear. I will submit okay. to God, Jesus Christ. And once you do that, you renounce fear. You renounce whatever is tormenting, whatever door you open, whatever portal you open, I renounce it. I, I, today, I divorce it. I give it an eviction notice and I receive God's best in my life and fill with the Holy Spirit, move forward, and you could be, wow, more than a conqueror. Wow. That's it. Amen. That's it. Thank you so much, John. We <laughs> are actually so going to hear more from you in just a minute. And I just, I, we will not submit to fear ever. Right. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Thank you so much. We are going to pray for all of your prayer requests. Call in if you're dealing right now with a spirit of fear. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God with you that you will experience breakthrough and total freedom. We'll be right back with John in just a moment, right after the good news.